Yo, Emma, you up? For you, sir, always. Okay, good. Check it out. I have something new today. Scanning. New M3 MacBook Air confirmed. Did Apple send this over for you to review? <clears throat> no, I uh, picked this up for myself. But before you get in my case, I traded in my MacBook Air. You know Air. you're not supposed to be spending any more money since purchasing the Vision Pro last month. You're on a tight budget, Jason. As I was saying before you cut me off, I traded in my M1 MacBook Air. So this upgrade was a lot more affordable than what the price tag suggests, okay? I think we should seriously consider freezing your accounts. Okay, can we talk about my personal finance? later and focus in on what's in front of us. Tell me everything that I need to know about the M3 MacBook Air. Roger that. The M3 MacBook Air is the third generation of Apple's most popular laptop computer that is equipped with the company's latest in-house silicon. As the name suggests, this laptop is powered by the new M3 chip, making it arguably the most powerful Ultrabook in its class by a considerable margin. My analysis shows 1.6 times general speed increase from the M1 MacBook Air and a significant performance boost when it comes to gaming and 3D rendering. These improvements don't come at the cost of the MacBook Air's class-leading battery life, as the M3 can support an impressive 18 hours of video playback on a full charge. The midnight colorway on the previous M2 version was known for being highly susceptible to fingerprints and smudges, so Apple added an anodized coating on the M3 version to mitigate this issue. The results thus far are mixed at best. The liquid retina display comes in at a 2560 by 1664 native resolution and 500 nits peak brightness, and I'm detecting excellent color accuracy, but there are lack of pro features like a high refresh rate. However, the M3 MacBook Air can support up to two 5K external displays, but it must be done in clamshell mode. As the Mac MacBook Air is a fanless machine, you'll want to carefully observe how the M3 manages thermals, as the previous generations have seen throttling during heavy sustained workloads. Moreover, I'm only detecting 8GB of unified RAM and 256GB of SSD storage, which are both strikingly low for 2024 standards. At $1,099 US, the M3 MacBook Air is one of the most expensive laptops in its class. However, it is without doubt one of the most powerful and should be compared more with pro-level devices, given its performance capability. Hey, it's Jason. I've had the new M3 MacBook Air for about a week now. I totally wasn't planning on getting this as my M1 version has been crushing it since picking one up last year at a really good price, but Best Buy is doing a pretty generous trading for Macs right now, so I very much on a whim decided to take advantage of the deal and do an upgrade. Now for reference, this is the base model 13-inch M3 MacBook Air, so it comes with the 8-core CPU and 8-core GPU, and yes, only 8 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of internal storage. Now I know there's probably a lot of questions around how this laptop performs given the lackluster spec sheet here but before we jump into that let's quickly cover the form factor and design as someone who's coming from the m1 this is my first macbook air with this refreshed design and i gotta say i love it don't get me wrong i like the old form factor with that wedge-shaped frame but this updated chassis that doesn't taper and looks a lot more like the macbook pro does make the macbook air feel a lot more modern and refined than before i specifically went with the midnight variant as this color was introduced on the m two MacBook Airs with a pretty strong criticism that it was an extreme fingerprint magnet, so Apple decided to add an anodized coating this year for the Midnight colorway. Now, I can't benchmark as I didn't test out the M2 Midnight MacBook Air myself, but the M3 in this color seems to be doing okay when it comes to battling smudges. I mean, you could definitely still see some on there when handling the device, but it's not something that is glaring or out of the norm of what I'd expect a dark metallic surface to pick up. Now, one thing that I'm absolutely loving is the return of MagSafe, not only because it's just just a way safer and easier way to charge up the MacBook, but mainly because it gives you access to both of the Thunderbolt 3 ports. It was painful losing what to charge when using the M1, so this is a welcome change. Now, I personally stuck with the 13 inch size because A, it's cheaper, and B, I wanted to prioritize portability, and this computer is still ultra lightweight and easy to take with you virtually anywhere. But if you're looking to be more productive, you can now connect the M3 MacBook Air to two external displays, one in up to 6K resolution and the second one up to 5K. This is something that many users have been asking for, so I'm glad this is something you can do natively, but it does require you to put the MacBook into clamshell mode, so you'll need to work off external peripherals to make this setup work. Now, when it comes to the screen, the M3 MacBook Air has the updated design with these smaller bezels, but awkward notch at the top. I will say that you do get used to it much like you did with the iPhones, and I'd say it's worth it to finally get a 1080p integrated webcam that performs significantly better than the 720p one that Apple used forever, and generally speaking, the display performs really well. Everything comes off sharp and colors are accurate, and it can get decently bright in case you're using the MacBook outdoors or in direct sunlight. 
Now the hardware here isn't exactly advanced, it's a standard LED panel so no micro LED or OLED to be found and the same goes with the refresh rate, it's still capped at 60 frames per second which is kind of disappointing but not exactly surprising as this is Apple's entry level laptop. But as far as the user experience is concerned, consuming content on the M3 MacBook Air is great, it still has above average speakers for a laptop which is really an underrated feature and almost everything about it feels premium when you're actually using it. But let's get into the main reason why I decided to upgrade to the M3 MacBook Air and that's because of the performance gains with the new M3 chip. Now it's generally known that Apple Silicon has been iteratively better since the leapfrog gains that it made with the M1, hence why I decided to pass on the M2 MacBook Air but considering that my M1 version was 4 years old and now discontinued, I wanted to explore how much better the M3 could be. Now let's get some standard benchmarks out of the way, this is how the M3 fares against the M1 running Geekbench, the M3 performs 26% better on the single core performance and 34% better on the multi-core score and the results are very similar when using Cinebench as well. Now whether or not you're going to actually see these performance gains really depends on your specific use case for the MacBook Air. If you're using it for general day-to-day -day web browsing, managing emails and documents, you're really not going to tell that much of a difference between the M3 and the M1 considering that the M1 can still handle that workload like it's a walk in the park. But once you start pushing the envelope a bit into spec intensive gaming and things like photo and video editing, that's where the M3 starts to shine. This is because the M3 chip is equipped with a new GPU architecture that includes dynamic caching and hardware accelerated ray tracing, focused upgrades to see a noticeable jump in graphics performance even from the relatively new M2. Now all of this sounds great but I really wanted to put this to the test as this is the base model with the 8GB of RAM and lower 8 core GPU so I loaded up Final Cut Pro with some heavy 4K footage on the timeline and basic editing was a breeze even with high res files, it was similar with the M1 MacBook Air so nothing too surprising there. But where it started to get impressive is when I applied some 3D motion graphics, this is a pretty demanding effect that even my M1 Max MacBook Pro struggles with from time to time and even though it wasn't blazing fast, it was able to to handle the edit surprisingly well. Now rendering time started to get a bit slower the more and more I was adding to the timeline which makes sense as this is a fanless device and I'm sure it was starting to get a lot warmer with all this 4k video editing but to be honest I didn't really see any major lag or experience any crashes which is encouraging to say the least. And what's great is that the M3 MacBook Air is still able to give users class leading battery life in my short testing I got around 13 hours before needing to re-up which is wonderful. Now all to say though if you do plan on using the MacBook Air is your primary device to edit high res photos or videos, I would recommend upgrading to the 16 gigabytes of RAM. It's not to say that you can't edit on the base model, but it'll be tough for this configuration to sustain its high performance if you're a power user. Plus upgrading to the 16 gigabytes also increases the GPU to 10 cores, so to me it's kind of worth the upgrade. But if you're planning on using the M3 MacBook Air for more casual day to day use and you're coming from the M1 version, this upgrade does make sense. but you may want to hold off for a bit longer and see if the price goes down at all maybe during the holidays, especially if the M1 is holding up and not giving you any issues. Now I do want to reiterate that it's only been a week and I really feel as though I need to test this over time to see how the base model M3 MacBook Air holds up, but let me know what you guys think about this update. Are you going to upgrade like me? Or do you think the M3 isn't worth it? Curious to get your thoughts, let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. And if you're looking for the review on why I bought the M1 MacBook Air last year, check it out here, it's going to help you be as informed as possible.